seven steps to build and craft the perfect offer. Welcome back to another episode of All or Nothing in Real Estate. I'm your host, Matt Smith, the founder of All or Nothing in Real Estate. This podcast is a movement to give back to this amazing industry has given so much to me and my family. And guys, today I've got, uh, I've got a special treat for, for you. So about a year and a half, two years ago, I did a webinar on seven steps to build and craft the perfect offer. If you'll remember, the marketplace was crazy with the pandemic and multiple offers. And we've experienced some similarities in our marketplace. And I think it's very super relevant for most, uh, most agents and most teams to make sure with this NAR stuff that's going on and a lot of different moving parts in our industry that we stay above, um, ahead of the curve. And we make sure that we are actually delivering our offers in a capacity where they're actually get accepted. Um, and so I've just experienced this in our business. It's been super helpful. Um, just a quick note. This was about two years ago. And so if you're watching it, it's not the best quality, it's not the best audio, not the best, um, but the content is really, really good and really relevant. And so a couple things there, listen for the nuances and the subtleties. And maybe there's just one takeaway that you can take away that will make your offer stronger so you can get more deals for your clients and ultimately sell more real estate. And also, guess what? We all evolve and we all grow. And I think it shows also that if you, a bad video is better than no video. So seven steps to the perfect offer so you can build a better offer, get your offers presented to where the agents actually want to present them, to where the owners are actually wanting to accept them and just get more deals for your clients. I hope you enjoy it. Are you sick and tired of losing out on multiple offer situations in today's crazy real estate market? Hey, Matt Smith here with All or Nothing in Real Estate. I've got good news for you is I have drafted the seven proven steps to help you draft the perfect offer for today's real estate market to help you have a higher chance of getting your client's offer accepted. There's nothing more frustrating in today's market, whether you're a buyer or a buyer's agent, um, whenever you find the perfect property for your client and then all of a sudden you write an offer and there's eight other eight other offers or 18 or 80, depending on your market, right? And your buyer loses out. So what I've done is drafted seven proven steps that we have done internally that has produced great, great results. All right, so I'm gonna go through these items. Let's start with number one. Number one is have a buyer's consultation. So that sounds simple, right? But the buyer's consultation educates your clients on the process and in, in today's market, even more importantly, educates them on the market. So we tell all of our agents to do this at the very first meeting. So do this sooner rather than later. Real estate is not just, as a real estate professional, your job is way more than just showing homes. It's not just to show them the home and open the door. Your job is to educate them. You are the professional. And so we create a proven process in our buyer's consultation that provides value to the client, educates them on the process, and in today's market, even more importantly, educates them on the market and what to expect. So a, a quick tip on that is tell them stories of other clients that have lost out on properties because they didn't understand the market. People understand stories. Be relatable, right? Don't just don't just fact tell them. Don't tell them a bunch of facts about all these homes that are um, getting multiple offers. Tell them a story about a family that missed out on the opportunity for the perfect home because they didn't understand the circumstances in the market. Make sure you re relate it to a story, right? All right. So make sure you do this, do this early and make sure that you educate them on the process in the market. Next thing is sometimes speed wins. Sometimes speed wins in today's market. If there's eight other offers and your, your client is going home to think on it, they're going to be thinking about a different property the next day because they're going to miss out on that opportunity. So it's even more crucial that you explain them to them, that to them up front so that they don't think that you are a pushy salesperson because that's not what you are, right? If you're in this group, if you're watching this video, you're not a pushy salesperson, but you also want, don't want them to miss out on that property. So it's so important you educate them properly. And again, another way to do that is by setting those proper expectations up front and tie it to a story of another client that lost out. Unfortunately, in today's market, almost all of you, probably all of you have a story of a client that lost out on the property because of multiple offers, um, just because there's such low inventory. <clears throat> all right. So number two, make sure you get your buyer pre-approved. That sounds simple, right? Get your buyer pre-approved. But 
let me go deeper. Make sure you get them pre-approved with the right lender. Make sure you get them pre-approved a lender that is trusted in your marketplace. If they don't go, go to 1-800-GET-ME-A-LOAN and you submit that and there's three other offers that are cash or with a lender that's more reputable that the, the listing agent knows, which one's going to look better to that seller, right? It's, it's make sure that you get them pre-approved with a reputable lender. And again, that's part of you being the professional is explaining how that affects the client. When, we, when a client comes to us and they already have a pre-approval from 1-800-GIVE-ME-A-LOAN, um, that, that doesn't carry much weight. We all know why. I don't need to get into that. But what carries weight in the marketplace is a true professional that is trusted in our area is the one that did the pre-approval, right? And now it carries weight. It wasn't just a few questions they answered online, and we hope that it comes together. Another trick, get your buyer pre-underwritten. Pre-underwritten. Right. So there's a there's a process called pre underwriting on a lot of government type loans, which a lot of buyers use in nowadays. Go through the pre underwriting process. Some lenders can do that in 48, 72 hours. Right. That's a very, very quick way for you to when, when you again. So here's where agents go wrong in today's marketplace. Let me give you a big picture view here. When agents go wrong is they they think, well, they want to go see one, two, three Main Street. So I'm going to go show them the property. Your job starts before you show a property. To do your job correctly, you need to advise them. And that's why you need to have a buyer's consultation to explain all of this stuff, th stuff through the process and help them know what to expect. Imagine they find the right house and they wait three days to go see it versus you having a meeting three days earlier. And now when they're going to see it, they understand the process, they understand the market, they understand that speed is important. They're pre-approved with a trusted lender and you've asked that trusted lender to go through pre underwriting. So now it's no longer a um, contingent approval. It's already went through underwriting. It's a legitimate approval, right? So now if you submit that offer, which, which, which is doing the client a better service? The first scenario or the second one? It's the second one by far, just by asking for another me a meeting and upfront so you can help them. So you can serve your client better because now you're giving them a better opportunity to get the property. All right. Um, number three. So let me retract here. Number one, have a buyer's consultation. Number two, get buyer pre-approved. Number three, communicate. Sounds simple, but I daily, daily agents are terrible at communication, whether it's with clients, with other agents, with vendors, it doesn't matter. To stand out as a real estate agent, if you just answer your phone half the time, you're going to stand out as somebody that communicates well. Unfortunately, people just don't communicate well in this business. So if you're able to communicate well with your client, number one, but also what about if you communicate well with the other agent? What if you had the listing and I had the buyer and I called you and said, hey, my clients are very interested in your property. Um, thank you so much for letting us in the property. I was just curious, what is important to your seller if we were to draft an offer? What matters to your seller? Is closing date important to them? Is the price the most important thing to them? Do they want possession after closing? Do they want to waive the inspection contingencies? What matters to your client? Because our clients want to submit the offer that looks best to your client because they really enjoyed the home. So what's important to your client? Versus assuming that I'm just going to, we're going to offer more money and they're going to take it. Most agents don't understand how this process works. When you say highest and best, it's not just highest, it's highest and best. And so what's important to that client is so crucial at this moment. And if you don't know as a buyer's agent, you're doing it wrong. Another side note on that is how your relationships are in your marketplace. If you're, are you known as a cutthroat agent? Are you known as somebody that doesn't do the right thing? If so, you better fix that reputation because in this marketplace, relationships with the other agents matter, right? Um, so how that agent, how that other agent on the other side of the transaction presents your offer is huge. How that other agent presents your offer is huge. If you have a great relationship with them, how they present the numbers or the offer, especially if there's a stack of eight or 10 or 12 of them, how they present your offer is very, very important because they see your name on that contract. And if the conversation goes with, well, I've had a couple deals with this agent and uh, they just never worked out so well. 
Or if the conversation goes with, every time I've worked with this agent, this team, I love working with them. It's a smooth process. Oh, by the way, they submitted a pre-approval letter with it. They said that this they changed their closing date because I told them this closing date was better for you. You get my drift? All that is a com communication. That is asking the right questions before you draft the offer on what's important. And then being a good person, right? So again, ask questions. What's important to your seller? What does the perfect offer look like to them? The seller's perception in a seller's market is everything. Let's say that again. You should write that down. The seller's perception in a seller's market is everything. How the seller perceives your offer, perceives your showing is everything. So make sure that they are perceiving it in a good manner. Not what's important to your client. Yes, you have to represent your client, but stay with me here. In my opinion, in today's market, in your best interest, it's not to necessarily get your client, quote unquote, the best deal. Yes, we want to always get them the best deal. But at the end of the day, if we over negotiate that and we don't find out what's important to the seller and they lose out on that property, do we really help them? No. We need to find out what's important to that seller. What, what does that seller want or need? And then we try to craft our offer that makes sense for our buyer to reflect that. Do we always do that? Absolutely not. But isn't that good information for you to have? Isn't that good information for you to have that conversation with your buyer um, whenever you're drafting that offer? So how the seller perceives as everything. Here's a big one too. It's way more than just price, guys. It's not just the one that submits the most money wins. I've talked to so many sellers that I'll start talking, all right, here's the prices. And I lay them out and they're like, wait a minute, let's not do price first. Which ones are pre-approved? Which ones are waiving inspections? Which ones have earnest money, right? Which ones has the close, which is the soonest closing date or the furthest out closing date, whichever is important to them. It's not just about money. So it's very important that you communicate that and figure out what is important to that seller and see if your buyer can accommodate to get the property and secure the property for that buyer, right? So other things that could be closing date, earnest money, um, possession after closing is a big one. What if the seller, and if that's something that the agent doesn't mention, maybe you mention it if your clients are open to it. What if we were to submit an offer that allowed them, it's, we know it's a low inventory market we're looking right now, we're considerate. What if our clients were to offer 30 days rent free for the seller to have 30 days to find another property and move after we close? Would that be convenient for them? If that's something your buyer's willing to do, that could be the icing on the cake that gets them the property, right? Um, loan type, um, make sure you explain the type of loan. If it's a government loan, the agent doesn't understand, make sure you educate them. Um, cash, of course, is cash important? Because um, then you have appraisals, all that stuff. Um, is your buyer willing to waive the inspection? That's a risk, right? But there are different, depending on your state, depending on where you are, there's other options. And just make sure you educate your clients so they know that that's an option for them. There's an appraisal gap, right? So what if the house under appraises by $20,000? What if you were to put something, a clause in your contract that says the buyer is willing to pay that difference out of pocket? Because they understand the market is moving faster than appraisals. Appraisals are moving. That's huge to communicate that and put that in the offer, right? And then of course, removing the other contingencies that don't make sense. All right, number three is communicate. Um, there's, I could go forever on that because that's a huge, huge hole that a lot of people miss. Number four, have the lender call the listing agent. So remember we're working with a trusted lender now, right? Now that lender has already pre-approved them, went through pre-underwriting. Now you submitted the offer, now the lender, you say, hey, Mr. Lender, would you mind calling um, listing agent down the street that has this property listed for our client, Su Sue and Joe over here? Um, would you mind calling them and telling them that this buyer's pre-approved, um, that you don't foresee any issues, blah, 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 right? So now it's coming from the lender's mouth that is a trusted professional in your market to the listing agent. That carries more weight than just a letter, right? That stands out. It's different especially if they've been went through pre-underwriting. The lender can explain what that means, um, which means way less potential issues coming up down the road, right? And then if the lender ends it with, is there anything that I can do to help your sellers feel more comfortable with these buyers? Because these are some of the best buyers I've seen, and I'm very, very confident there's not going to be any issues. Is there anything that I can do to make them feel more comfortable? There's just probably going to be no after that conversation, right? But now, again, how is that seller going to present that offer versus the other offers? Makes a difference. Number five, escalation clause or escalation writer. Um, so depending on your market, get with uh, get with your broker, whatever your laws are, see how that works. But that's a great way for you to escalate the price in multiple offer situations, but also 
you don't want to overpay, right? So we had a little adjustment in our marketplace. Some people would put in the MLS that the seller is not accepting escalation clauses. Um, I, I think it's a mistake, but that, that was their choice, their client's choice. Um, so my point being is make sure that you're educated on what that means and how that affects your client. So an example could be, let's say it's listed, a house is listed at $250,000, but you already know there's five offers on the table and the listing agent has hinted or suggested they're very strong offers, right? So now your buyer wants to come in and they're willing to go up to 275 to get that property, right? In this, in this example, instead of just writing an offer at 275,000, if they're accepting escalation clause, why don't you put an escalation clause in there that says my, my buyer will offer up to $275,000, but that will be, that will be 2,000, 2,500, 5,000, whatever significant in your marketplace. We, I think we settled on like 2,500 in our marketplace because that was a big enough difference that it could wait for the seller. So have that conversation. So let's just say 5,000 in this example. So up to $5,000 more than the next highest and best offer up to $275,000. Please submit the next highest and best offer to justify adjusted sales price, right? There's um, our brokerage um, has a clause that we've went through all the attorneys, all that that goes through. You can put it in special agreements. Again, get with your broker, with your, your local real estate commission, whatever for your stipulations on that. But that's a great way to help secure the deal, but also make sure that your buyer doesn't feel like they're overpaying and just throwing a big number out there. What I have found is that makes the buyers feel more comfortable putting a higher number at the end goal because they're willing to pay more, but they don't feel like they have to pay more, right? So escalation clause is a huge, huge deal. Um, number six, this one is very, very simple. Everybody can do it, but nobody does. Very few do. Um, there are some of you that do that. Um, but number six is submit your offer correctly. So make sure your paperwork's straight. Submit your offer, include a pre-approval letter, have your offer all signed, executed properly, have it neat and send it in a PDF form, break down the offer in the email, right? Make sure all the disclosures, all the writers are attached. It seems very, very simple, but we, we get a lot of offers around here and majority of them are not submitted cleanly. It makes a difference because if we now have to go chase something, what if that, what if that deadline for that, that offer is in two hours? Now we have to go chase you to get your paperwork that you should have submitted right the first time. What if you don't have time to get it corrected? Just take the time to submit it correctly, right? Yes, time is very, very important, but if you don't have time to do it right, when are you gonna have time to do it over? All right, um, number seven is over communicate. Yes, there's two communications on these points because it's that important. So once you submit the offer, once you submit the offer, shoot the agent a text. Hey, I just sent you an offer on 123 Main Street. Pick up the phone and call them have a conversation. These are people. Explain your offer. Explain why you think it's a great offer. Explain the benefits. Go over the high points, right? Like I said earlier, when you submit the offer, put the high points in a breakdown. So it's easier for that agent to understand what your offer is, especially if there's something confusing in the offer. If there's an escalation clause, as an example, don't just send it, send them an email. We get this all the time. You get to send an email. And if you're a listing agent here, you've had a listing, you've received an offer like this and it, you roll your eyes every time you get it. You get an email, you get no text, you get no call. It's all out of order. There's no pre-approval letter. Don't be that person in this market when you're representing your buyers, you're doing them a disservice. Plus as professionals, just be a damn professional, right? Um, anyway, um, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get off of that. So make sure you call the listing agent, over communicate. Um, and break down the offer in simple terms so they understand. Just just hit the high points, bullet points in the email. Hey, the offer is X, they're asking this closing cost, they're doing this type of loan, they're pre-approved, wanna close X date, right? Just break down the high points of it. Um, and use that to build the relationship with that agent and sell why this is a good offer and why you drafted this this way, right? Um, add in any personal touch where you can, um, a, a quick, trick is uh, to, you know, say something personal about the buyers. You know, the kids really, really love the backyard. They were playing back there while we were showing the property. And these buyers can just see, they can just see their family having picnics back there or family gatherings or whatever, right? If you can just throw that in, in that conversation, now it stands out, it's different. And hopefully that message gets relayed to the seller and it'll make a difference, right? So again, it's not always about the money. All right, guys, so those are the seven steps to draft your perfect offer. I'm going to go through them again. Number one, have a buyer's consultation. Number two, 
get your buyer pre-approved and pre-underwritten when possible. Number three, communicate. Communicate with the other agent. What does the perfect offer look like to your seller? What is important to your client? And then your offer needs to reflect that. Number four, have the lender call the listing agent. Ask your lender that you, it's a trusted lender you got to pre-approve with, right? Remember, so have your lender call them and explain that this is a very strong buyer. There's no issues. They're already through pre-underwriting. Have them have that conversation with the listing agent. Number five, escalation clause or escalation writer, um, whichever is necessary. So um, we went over that in detail. Number six is submit your offer correctly. Just organize your stuff, submit your stuff right so they don't have to fix your mistakes. Um, number seven, over communicate after you send the offer, right? Make sure you send the offer properly and then explain the benefits of the offer, break it down for them, sell the offer, tell a story about your clients to the listing agent, about why they enjoyed the house um, and that's it, guys. Those are the, the checklists, the seven proven steps that have been phenomenal for our team to help us make sure that we are winning um, the majority of multiple offer situations. We don't want to win them all, right, because maybe it's too much for the client, but it's really, really been helpful for us, for our clients, and I wanted to share with you. So thanks for watching. Have an amazing day.